Hi folks. Well, I've got myself a new toy. I've been waiting for this for a few weeks because it's been stuck at customs. So I thought I'd have my first look with a camera pointed at it at the same time. So in this box there should be a, a new USB microscope and um, should be significantly better than my old one which was, yeah this is what I was using before, this is um, Andon Star, um, it's quite reasonable for the money, it was 35 quid delivered, and it's got a little stand that goes up and down, but it's got a very limited frame rate out of that and if you crank the resolution up to anything worthwhile it's uh, drops down to about five or six frames a second. So I thought I'd try and get myself something significantly better this time. So I'll put a link up to the eBay page I got this from. Not a link, um, I'll show you the page. So we're certainly well packed, like in the, uh, the Costco doll arrangement with a box within a box. See what I got. USB cable. Uh, 5 volt DC for camera it says. Presumably that's the power supply, some software, oh, and the camera as well. So this is the actual camera unit off the top of it. Buttons for zooming in and out by the looks of it. And a Chinese style, you know, American style power supply. Not UK. Sent a couple of unfused dodgy adapters that fit any socket. We've got LED ring light and power supply for that, presumably. And then I guess the rest of this lot is going to be the stand. This is very, very heavy. Um, lots of metal work in here. Holds the camera. Another arm arrangement and a third arm. Big chunky Allen key. The lens for the microscope. That's, oh, it feels nice actually. That's got a lovely feel to it. I like that. And a slab that it all mounts on top of. Don't get any of the instructions for how it goes together. Can't see anything like that. A bit of a scratch on there. I won't worry too much, because I'll probably scratch it some more soon. in a variety of different ways depending upon where we want to look. That's quite useful. Oh. And that 
bounce this up and down as well. Fine control. And then we've got the illumination to fit. So our two power bricks, one for the ring light and one for the microscope, both come with the same 2.1mm jack plugs on the end. And um, of course the first time I plugged them in I got it the wrong way round and one of these is 12 volt and one of these is 5 volt and uh, the little LED on the back was off and I was rather worried that I'd uh, blown up the camera. But, um, Fortunately, I plugged them in the other way around and uh, the LED still didn't come on with the 5 volt there. So I pressed the power button and it switched on and it worked fine. So I've, um, I've labelled these two now so that I don't make the same mistake again. But um, yeah, having the same for both 5 volt and 12 volt power supplies is um, not really ideal. Um, and these cheap rubbishy plugs are also not ideal because of course in the UK we have 30 amp ring mains and uh, this has 10 amp rated contacts so this would quite happily melt on our ring mains in the UK so I'm not going to use them I've got an auto transformer that's got US style sockets on it so I'll use that instead the cables on these are really not very generous at all I mean the one for the ring light is perhaps a meter and a half from the wall socket so, not great on that. Uh, the one from microscope is not quite so bad, but still need a power socket very close to where you're plugging this in. And hopefully, I get lights come on. And just to give you a bit of a better look at this rear panel, we've got USB output, somewhere for an SD card, S, you know, micro SD card to go in, a trans flash, I think it is. Um, HDMI socket which due to the fact I keep losing the cables I've started called hide me cables um, yeah on off and the little icicle is freeze frame that'll pause the image um, we've got zoom in and zoom out because this has got a 14 megapixel sensor and it's outputting you know 2 megapixel 1920 by 1080 um, you can actually zoom in and out on the sensor um, menu button take photos or start and stop recording and what, what mode it's in, whether it's taking photos or movies or playback. Now I will say I really like this stand. Um, it's actually been a couple of days since I recorded the unboxing of this and I had the chance to play around with it a bit and this stand when you set it up right is absolutely lovely because it lets you do silky smooth panning across images and I'll just give it something better to look at. So got a British £20 note there and there we go, nicely in focus and um, you can just so smoothly move across this um, actually I should hit record is that recording? no mode record there we go so we're recording now and um, this is our UK £20 note that's um, Adam Smith's nose, which has got lots of 20s in it. We've got the silver strip woven through the paper there. Um, lots and lots of overprinting. And on the other side of it, we've got these uh, shiny holograms. Um, so if I change the... Actually, if I turn off the 
backlight on there, there we are. So we've got hound there, and if I change the angle correctly, it changes to, it should change to a 20. Let's try to it. Um, let's have a play with the digital zoom in. So, seven times zoom. Um, now we've got a lot of pixelation there, but if I give that a bit more light, our image quality will hopefully improve. That's looking pretty rubbish actually. Now I'm not sure how the recording works, because I keep pressing record and I get a flashing red dot in the corner for a brief while but it doesn't stay there for long. I don't know if the recording is limited to a certain amount of time because um, this thing came without any form of instructions. And I'll just give you a quick look through the menus. Uh, I can get into the right mode. Menu. So we've got this line set thing that lets you put a horizontal vertical line or a set of crosshairs on the image. Exposure, white balance, colour, language Frequency is 50 hertz, 60 hertz, flicker reduction. Format formats the um, compact flash card, and default setting is a factory default. And that's all I've managed to find for the menus. Um, somehow there must be a way to set the time and date on this thing because it puts a time and date stamp on a recording, but I haven't found out what it is. And I'm hoping if I just press OK now, yeah, we take a photo. So we'll just get a few photos of that. Lots of nice, neat little controlled impedance traces. Now, using this thing as an inspection camera like this, hooked up to an HDMI output, is really quite nice, and it works very well in that respect. But um, I do have a problem with the optics that it's supplied with, because the maximum field of vision, this is zoomed out as far as we go while still being in focus, is, um, well, pretty tiny and not really suitable for looking at circuit boards. So I've ordered some alternative lenses to go on there which will hopefully sort that problem out for me and give me a bit more working area because I've got this big, big metal table but um, you know, if we can only look at things at that sort of size it's, it's a bit too zoomed in for soldering or anything like that and then of course everything else is even closer up than that. Right, now I will plug it into the PC and uh, show you the marvellous software on there. It's um, really good. I love it. So when we're running in PC camera mode, the top part of the HDMI output just turns to black and white snowstorm garbage. And uh, I'll show you what we're getting on the PC. So we've got the software up and running here. And uh, even though it's connected to the camera, we've got absolutely nothing on the display. But if I put a moving image in front of the camera for a little while, then we actually do get something through. Um, and it's very interesting that the stream doesn't start up until it's actually got a moving image. And as you can see, we're getting lots and lots of garbage pixels in this stream. Um, and it, I've been playing with this for a while and the video keeps locking up and it does strange smearing and it's very odd. Um, I think the reason it doesn't start up the video until there's a moving image there is it's never actually properly sending the keyframes between different images. Um, normally encrypted video streams are made up of a keyframe every 30, 40, 50 frames, something like that, and then a bunch of frames that describe the changes in between them. But this just seems to be sending the information when something changes and doesn't actually seem to send keyframes at all, which makes it the USB option totally unusable. Um, which is really rather bad because uh, I got this to be a USB camera. Um, let's put something else under there for a change. This old fiver. But I got this specifically because I wanted it as a USB camera and it said it did 1280 by 720 on the output but it keeps getting this garbage and this isn't my PC, I've tried it on another computer as well and it does exactly the same thing on there. But it's like, although the camera does work, the um, USB implementation is really rather poor. So I'm going to plug back in the uh, 
mass storage mode and see what we managed to capture while we were filming. So this camera records its movie files in QuickTime movie format and they're uh, 1920 by 1080 resolution and the image files that it's captured are 10 megapixel stills and just a quick look at the software that came with it on the CD there's a uh, Word document that contains the instructions in a language I don't read and an alphabet I don't recognise so um, not much use to me in the UK if anyone knows how to translate from Japanese I presume this is it came from Hong Kong, could be Chinese um, it'd be fantastic to know what it says um, here's another document about the setup file that means nothing to me um, the actual version of AMCAP that it came with is a Chinese language version but I already had a version from a different webcam that I've used in the past which is what I was using earlier in this video and uh, I tried looking at the in the INI file to see if I could change the language setting in there but there isn't an option for changing the language at all so again not really much use to me in the UK and it does come up with some setup installer and I gave that a try but it just throws an error when you try and run it and it prints a load of question marks and if you okay that error it gives you some more question marks so the software that came with it is absolutely useless to me um, and it comes with some instructions again that don't mean anything and I still don't see any way in any of those instructions of setting the time and date on the camera so every movie I ever shoot with that thing um, it's never going to have a time and date. So, what's my final opinion on this? Well, it, it's a mixture of good and bad. The stand is lovely, the lens is lovely, but not right for my application. But um, it's a fantastic image it does, and up to 180 times zoom. Um, I probably only need up to about 10 times zoom, and that's the minimum on this thing. Um, the camera unit is pretty good as a standalone, um, very nice on the HDMI output because it's fully interactive and there's no lag or anything like that. The movies that it captures are 1920 by 1080, 25 frames a second, so they're very good quality movies, but it's odd that it keeps stopping recording after 35, 40 seconds. Um, very strange that it does that, don't know why it does that, there's no limit on the memory card or anything. Um, the USB support is useless. There's no point trying to hook this thing up directly to a PC. As a standalone device it's fine, but hooked directly to a PC it's no good. Um, as for the 14 megapixel sensor, well, but it's taking 10 megapixel stills, so I don't doubt that it's got a 14 megapixel sensor. But if you're only using it standalone on HDMI, the digital zoom doesn't actually zoom in on the available pixels, it's just making the pixels on the screen bigger. Um, which is a shame because I'd have thought with 14 megapixels they could have actually selected a subset of the pixels they're using. Um, overall though, nah, I think I'd probably choose something else if you were looking to buy. Now I've got it, I'm going to live with it and um, buy some different optics for it. But I couldn't really recommend this as a USB camera. Um, so yeah, that's the final verdict. It's mm, not great. Hope you enjoyed that folks, hope it comes in useful to someone and um, cheers everyone, thanks a lot, bye.